Hello, Internet. Hi again. My name's Henry. <laughs> this is Sam. And we're saying this video to Sydney. <laughs> this is a campfire. Sydney's here. Again. <laughs> Three weeks in a row. You can't get rid of me. I wasn't in your video. It was Henry with me. You. All right. <laughs> Three videos in a row. Three videos in a row. At two different posts. <laughs> Sydney Key Coast to Coast, the new amazing talk show coming to morning television. It's everything you need to know about. They're going to talk about drama, cats, cats that like drama, the play cats, <laughs> um, Doctor Who, <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> and that one time. At Sleepaway Camp. I'd watch it. Um, is it being produced by John Hardoff? How did you know? John put out a request for someone to be on Wild and Out, and I immediately tagged Storm. Oh, I saw that. Because I was like, Storm, if you've ever asked for a moment, this is it. Um, Henry, hello. Sydney's still here. <laughs> We were editing my play, sort of. I'm really bad at being a functioning person. Seeing city trees. Um, but we're here. We survived another week. I still don't have COVID. I also don't. I actually got tested yesterday and got my results while I was here. Nice. So you could have told I knew I did it. I knew I did it. Um, it was just, it was a cough, cough, and I knew I did it. You know, I, no reason for me to I get tested, like, every other week and every week and it's awful and uh they just put out a thing the executive orders that i no longer need to be tested as though i needed to be tested before like still not like i'm still gonna do it I don't trust people kids are gross i watched a kid i can't stress this enough pull their mask down and miss their arm and just cough all over their desk and then put their mask back up and i was like dude you're you're killing people like you're a murderer Every single cop is just one inch closer to death. Um, and that's my job all day, every day. I watched a kid, I cannot stress it enough, pick his nose through his mask. <laughs> He's in eighth grade. First of all, he shouldn't be picking his nose. Second off, that's not how masks work. Third off, that's disgusting. I don't, I'm not having a good time. <laughs> I'm trying really hard to be positive. Like I have, I had a really good, like end of a really weird day. You watched Inside Out, Henry. I cried. It was a terrible experience. Riley has depression and, like, severe, like, like people need to acknowledge it. And all my students were like, what do you mean? I go, she clearly has depression. They go, how do you know? I go, because sadness is always around in the background and literally touches every memory. Meaning that everything she feels is with a twinge of sadness, which means she clearly is having depressive episodes. And then when sadness and joy leave, those are all symptoms of a depressive episode. Like, and then the mom, the mo did you notice who controls the, the control center oh, for the mom? I saw something about this. Sadness thing. controls yeah. the mom, and then anger controls the dad's one, That's which awesome. means like, there's a lot, like that one specific moment in the beginning of the movie where, um, where mom and dad are fighting and um, fear takes over. And it's like, mom and dad are fighting, stress levels are high. Uh, I'm like, Oh, that means it's happened before. <laughs> the entire movie just hurts me on like a really personal level, and it shouldn't, but it does. We we didn't even get to any of the stuff that was supposed to be talked about. That's just what's going on in life. Um, I throw axes again, play hockey again. I almost lost my knee. Uh, anything exciting happening in your life? I'm still in school. I'm still working on shows, which is exciting, but I'm busy. <laughs> exciting. Hey, Henry, can you tell which of us are, you know, emotionally and physically exhausted? <laughs> that you can't. Because it's both of us. <laughs> I had a, a boss ask me last week if I had the bandwidth to do something for her. And I was actually laying on the floor of Henrik's apartment when I got the email, and I said no. 
Then the boss asked, mine is uh, not. Well, it's like like an internship, and I had met with her literally like two days before in person for the first time, and she was saying like, oh yeah, like if you're ever too busy, like you can say no, and like that's fine. So then I, I was 7 a.m. and I was laying on the floor of Henry's apartment, and I went, I could do this right now. I was like, I like I should do it. I I can do it right now. And then I went, why would I do that? I am. Like, I'm on the other side of the country. I'm visiting one of my friends. I'm about to spend the weekend with my family. I don't need to do this. And I said, no, I'm sorry. I don't have the bandwidth for this. I'm glad that one of us has a healthy response to work issues. And the other one's me. (laughs) I'm in charge of after school. I didn't ask to be in charge of after school, but I was deemed competent, which is a terrible thing. And just keeps happening in my life where people just keep giving me, like, stuff. Like, um, I know this is going to sound silly, but, like, you know the spoons metaphor? You know the spoons metaphor? I'm not sure. Everyone has, just, like, a certain amount of spoons in their drawer. Okay. Eventually, you need to... There's a train! Every so often, you need to stop and feed the spoons and then put them back. Because every time you use them, you're running out of spoons. Yes. Um, so that's why I constantly make jokes about soup because people are soup. You made a joke about soup about ten minutes ago. <laughs> anyway, now that we're six minutes into this video, we should probably talk about my questions to Henry um, because I feel like we've said enough. If it this. helps, I've already answered them. It does. I have no um, additions or anything that I would like to change. Okay, so Henry only got one thing right into this question this was a right or wrong answer and henry failed um you only got one question you only got one part right and that's who you're gonna marry the only acceptable answer is jason katz i mean have you seen him have you, have you seen jason katz he's got the, the smile that can light up the world in tiny tiny nipples and if that doesn't get you i don't know what does let's be very candid here uh, so everyone here should be marrying jason katz and jason katz if you're watching um what up that was very sexual. <laughs> I'll try that again. Okay. Better? Worse? <laughs> um, and if Jason Katz's his girlfriend's watching, get away from my man. <laughs> um, so the only acceptable answer is Jason Katz. But like, Henry said that guys don't think about their wedding. I think about my wedding all the time. Like, it's very weird because I don't want, like, people or dating or talking to anyone. But, like, a wedding is a show. I view my wedding as a show, if that makes sense. And it's really, like, selfish to do that. Because, realistically, there's going to be another person in my life eventually. Or not. And so, like, eventually. Potentially. I don't know. Humans are disgusting. So, anyway. But I felt like, yes, it's a day about me and what I want. And what I want is a really nice wedding that is... Uh, like, very much uh, kind of based in, like, two important things that, like, I care about, which is nonsense. And then also, like, my family. So, like, it has this weird balance of I really, like, outdoor, indoor, don't care that much. But, like, I want it to be at, like, a place where, like, it has to be a Jewish wedding because my parents will kill me otherwise. So, like, yay, but also, like, fun and, like, doesn't need to be like it's gonna be my rabbi because the dress want it, but like also like we walk down the aisle dressed as characters from Steven Universe, uh, and like I'm dressed as Steven, she's dressed as Connie, we spin, do a kiss, and bam. So next thing. What I'm hearing is you're one of like those quiet Jewish weddings. Yes, but a good one. <laughs> Like, not one of those cringy ones, like, with white people dancing. So not the ones they show us literally during orientation. Not those. Like, one of the good ones. Because those ones are off. Um, yes. But, like, that's not the big part that matters to me. Like, I want the, the like, fun, happy atmosphere. And then for the dance, hear, hear me out. Okay? I have three dance. I picked the songs. Like, I'm... my Are my, you marrying yourself? I hope. I'll have a wedding. Hold on. Pause. Who says that I can't have a wedding for myself? No, one, but I'm so genius. He said that he can't marry himself. Like, I feel... 
I don't. Who is that and what is a glee? Is that the show with Harry Potter in it? No. Oh, oh yes! <laughs> Merry <laughs> Christmas! Harry Potter's in it. This is the show that's created a Derek I disagree. I think okay, Harry yeah, Potter but, created but, Derek Yeah, but he wasn't famous until Glee. And then Starkid had like a small following in Glee and Derek was his fame until it made Starkid blow up. It's so all thanks to Ryan thank, Murphy. I don't want to thank Ryan Murphy for anything. So, um, but like, I have a song that like is my ideal wedding song called Pudding. If you've never heard of it, it the chorus is uh the chorus in the second verse is literally a definition of my life. Um and also it's it's got like that humor, but like also like very sweet. Um what is it? Uh the second the second verse is so if you're into dudes with beards and anxiety attacks. Don't worry, darling. I got you covered on both ends. When all I have to offer anyone is my own, my own confusion. <laughs> like, like that's exa- that fits perfectly. Um, what is it? I the opening is I've been picturing you. Naked shit. <laughs> and when I say that out loud, it's kind of off putting. And I love pudding. It's the actual words in the song. And I've been dreaming about a wedding where you name all of our kids after your favorite cartoons. That's really fucking cute. Like, that is me. Marry me, like I'd be very happy about, because that's that's the thing that I would do. So I thought like a lot. I have to do a, a dance with like my mom, obviously, but also like I have a cousin who is like my godmother who does not have kids and like looks at me and my brother has kids, and I would have like a dance with her as well because she deserves it. And I already picked the song for that. It's Sedona, um, because her dog's name was Sedona, and she also really likes it. It'll be really cute, and she would cry. And that's what. That's what we're here for. Again, this is a show. We're putting on the performance. <laughs> There's no actual emotional investment in any of this. I'm just giving the people what they want, which is, uh, what is that? Um, mm-hmm. The song by Panic at the Disco? A Wonderful Caricature of Intimacy. Yeah, it's that. It's all fake. But I thought about this a lot. And Henry said, guys, don't think about this. And, like, I know a bunch of guys that have thought about their wedding. Like, I was at a wedding. And, like, people forget that the groom exists yes. all the fucking time. And it's really rude. Like, the the um, the wedding plan, the coordinator, I was doing the music. And the wedding coordinator just sent the entire, like, bridal party and group, like, with the groom. So the groom's walking to, like, this really heartfelt song with his mom. And the bridesmaids are just in the background. I'm like, no, like that's not fair. The groom needs that it's time. Like, like it's his too. wedding, and so like the, we're gonna get rid of that that mis- that that nonsense misogyny. We're keeping it real. Is it misogyny? I don't know what that proper term. Sexism. We're just gonna blanket sexism. It's not really mis. I don't want Henry as a as. Hi, Henry. Henry, do you not, do you really not think about your wedding? Tell me, I'm really intrigued. This is not like the question. I'm just, I, I, I don't believe that you don't. I feel like every guy does and is afraid to admit it. I have a lot of feelings about weddings. Um, so the answer is like, I think every guy actually very much does and like is overlooked at their wedding. Like, like. One of the best parts of my brother's wedding was, like, we had a moment where the, the photographer, because the photographer first spent their entire time in, like, my sister-in-law's, like, bridal suite, like, pictures of her getting ready, you know. And so my brother, we were just sitting there, like, around. And so, I like, we were, like, there was nothing. We were just sitting there awkwardly. It was uncomfortable, waiting. Like, no one came and paid attention to us. So I was like, let's get a photo of, like, all of us, because we need something. So like we have photos of like me and my brother, just like 
like a few of us in like just the normal clothes, but then we had on like the correct socks and like things like that that everyone wanted to like have, and we did something because it matters. Like people say it doesn't, but it does. So yeah, Henry asked a question. Yes. What was it? It was. Um, what something that you you planned and it's fallen apart. The the premise of it was that Henry and I were at his apartment Friday morning, and he had planned on like not really working in the morning because I was there and I was leaving, and so he was like, oh, I'll just not work in the morning. I'll start later. And then I passed you all and then you you just kind of like looked at me for like four weeks and just like left. And we had a date, and so it was like, have you ever planned this thing and then it it did not follow through. Because something came up. Okay, you go first because I have like eight answers. Do you want me like you go, you go first? Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna list like I'm not gonna go into depth on each of them, but I'm gonna start like and just kind of they're gonna get more and more like horrible failure thing as it goes. So like um there's this one time I uh I had um, a show booked. I was really excited about it. Um, and four people showed up for an audience of, like, that could have been 50. Like, I've, I've performed that same venue for 50 people. Four people showed up. Um, so that was one. Um, I, I started a company, had a contract with uh, the local town government, and found out today that we have no students. Um, I, uh, I, I planned out an entire book tour. And I was going to travel all over the country selling my book and doing comedy shows and like all these performances and poetry shows. And then there was this weird thing called COVID. Um, and there was this one time I had planned out uh, a, a camp event called the Trail of Chief Lohican. Uh, and then it rained and then it stopped raining. And then we worked really hard to make it happen. And then Mark Bynack canceled it uh, while the kids were on the trail. What year was that? 2019, 2018. 2018, 2018. Um, so there we go. And then there's one time we were doing a we were doing a, a Fourth of July show for camp. It was going to be this really big thing, and then I died. Do you want me to keep going? <laughs> every every plan of mice and men fall awry. This question. <laughs> He's just an attack on everything I've ever tried to do. I wrote a script. I wrote a series of poems in a weekend. We're still formatting it. That's why Sydney's here. We didn't finish. Um, my mental my mental capacity stopped at around like page 17 or 18. I'm going to say 18 because it makes me feel better. Um, but like, you know what I mean? Like, everything you plan falls apart. That's why there's that new TikTok plan. Okay, here's what we do. We make the plan. We follow the plan. The plan goes haywire. You get rid of the plan. That's my life. Every day. Every time I wake up. Um, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that one time I went to grad school? Uh, and was like, I'm going to work in therapy. And now I don't. <laughs> Every plan is bad. I, um... Don't work if like because you think of something else. I did. You, you don't. No. Um, I don't work if I don't hold myself to like some form of deadline or anything. Um, so I will make like to do lists every day, and I don't follow any of them. So that is like, and they're, they're checklists, so that way I can like, if I do something, I can check it off and like be a little satisfied. Um, and then I, it like, I'll do like the load the dishwasher. But I won't do like do your assignment that's due tomorrow, which I'm not doing right now, actually. Do you do you do you use post it? No, I use the notes app on my phone. See, I use post it because it's a certain like sensory satisfaction of starting the note, and that's how I get it done. I really just like being like, boop. Mm. um, but then, so every day, every plan that I make, cool. except for when I'm like. Oh. When I got home on Monday from Seattle. <laughs> uh, and that was part of my plan for the day. So, success. Um, but then also on like a bigger scale, um, I was, I had done a show in college 
with a couple of my friends, and it was just like a three-person show, and I assistant directed it, and they wanted to read to do it again, like post college as like a we're gonna do this job and like it won't be the same thing, um, but like we both want to be in it again, um, and they asked me to like, direct and stage manage it. I was gonna do that. We had talked to a venue. They were uh, like, we were. It was gonna be super cool. We had we were st- we started rehearsals, and then um, COVID happened, and then we were like, oh, and so like early days like March because we were gonna do it in like May, end of April, um, because we had to do it was in a college town, so we had to do it before all the kids left, and so we were gonna do it like end of April, and we were like, I feel like even if this does go away next month. We probably shouldn't do this anymore because we were gonna do it like in a bar. Um, so by like mid March, we were like, "Yeah, I think we should return. Like, we should get our money back." We like bought the rights to the show, and uh, yeah. So then we uh, indefinitely canceled that. That's really sad. We My were we were like forming a little theater company. We there was it's a thirty person play, and two of them were gonna do it again. They had actually just told the third original cast member that they were going to do it and not include him. And then they, if they had waited like a week, they wouldn't have even had to have, had to have told him. It was really sad. Yeah. Um, I had more. There was like this one time I was going to rent an apartment with Dan Kastler. That didn't happen. Um, this one time. This is one time I was going to put up a poster with Zoe Sites and instead of a ladder almost crushed my skull. Yeah. It's like the, the, this question has so many answers. Um, this one time I was going to go get the, bi- the, the, bicycle, the unicycles from camp. I still you have it. Do that. I didn't still didn't do that. Uh, you were going to get them from camp while I was still at camp. Yeah. And then I chose not to. You actively chose not to multiple times. Well, it was because I had to take storm Yeah, but there was like there was that one. Times. There was at one time when I started a business. Um, but that's it. This is just not as it's not what I planned. Um, anything else? Are we missing anything? I feel like there's I, a lot. I think just everything I planned. I think everything I've planned in my entire life from the moment I was born, which I did not plan. Personally, um, to now, which is, have been terrible, terrible mistakes, just gone horribly awry. Which is weird because they didn't go a week. I'm a comedic genius and should be treated as such. <laughs> um, that's it. That's that's the end of the video. There's no question. I refuse. I knew what I was, gonna, I knew what I was doing. This is the last ever after campfire because we can't somehow guarantee Sydney in the next one. I'm not going back to <laughs> <laughs> You show up to your apartment. To burn and he's already there. <laughs> We're just spending lots of money to keep you in these videos. Like... To a level that is just like unhealthy. Like if you can't make it, we take Yuri, we put him in like we put him in like a monster and just superimpose you on top of him. And then it's you, like we get a recording of you, but like we snip it together from like multiple conversations. Instead of just like you name it. Yeah. So it'll be like, hello, my name is Sydney Gee, and I am here. I mean, this video is 25 minutes long. I feel like I've spoken enough in this that you can do that. Exactly! We just take from, like, any video that you show up, like, there's one where, like, for some reason we don't have the lower half because you're wearing a mask. Like, it's fine. Oh, yeah. Yep. We, got, we got this. It's easy. Um, my question to Henry. <sighs> Henry, if you could interview any person, Alive. Doesn't have to be famous. Just could be you could just interview anybody, you know. Anyone you want. 
Who are you interviewing? Why are you interviewing? What are you asking them? Don't ask. Never mind. Caught myself. Caught myself. I almost made a dark joke that had nothing to do with Henry, but I'm glad I caught it because it's not appropriate for our younger listeners. I will ask you when you stop the thing. <laughs> um, but Henry, just pick someone, anyone. Just pick whoever your favorite celebrity is. It could be um, Charles Manson. Charles His Manson's favorite not, celebrity. Charles Manson's also not alive. So I picked a dead person and Henry's favorite celebrity. Um, it could be Chris. It could be Chris Pratt or Chris Tucker or Chris um, or Christian Bale or Chris um, Evans is another Chris or Chris what's it, Hemsworth or Chris Pine or Chris B. Chicken. You did not acknowledge Chris Schultz. I did acknowledge Chris Schultz. <laughs> I added to Chris Schultz, like because realistically, we'd all interview Chris Schultz if we could. Who among us is holy enough to spend time with Schultz? Praise be he who drives in the sun, who destroys the brakes on his quad. Anyway. Goodbye, Henry!